Okay, we're looking at problem 9-2B on page 441 of the Warren textbook uh, edition, the 25th edition. And um, you'll see I've recreated the little chart there. This is a list of the chart of account, not list of the accounts receivable at the end of the year. Remember in your practice set how you had four or five receivables. In this case, they have um, several. We don't know how many because they've only recreated the first two and the last one. But uh, you can see here that they have 15,000 plus 8,000, that's 23,000, 26,000 that they show us. And we're missing enough to make up I mean, $875,000 worth of receivables. Well, the problem is that now we have to add some more to it. They've given us um, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 looks like uh, accounts that we need to add to this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw those in and let you see those. And then we're going to add them to our, our, our totals up here. Okay, I've added the um, missing links here. If you'll notice, I've got a, the date here. This is the end of the year date. That's the date I'm going to use to figure out how far past due an account is. And I've sorted them from oldest to newest, the newest being Visions' hair and nail, which is not due till actually the 11th of January or 11 days past the day we're talking about. Let's go back and look at um, Excel hair products just for the fun of it. I'm going to click on that for you. Um, let's just compute it in our heads and make sure we got the, the past due, the days past due or days overdue correct. Uh, July has 31 days, so 31 minus 3 the due, the uh, which is the date of the uh, of the of the receivable is 28. Uh, there's also 31 days in August. There are 30 days in September, 31 in October, 30 in November, and 31 in December, giving me a grand total of 181 days. And I've done this for several of these just to, to make myself happy, and and I'm convinced that we've got it right. Now, I've uh, I've done another thing. I've totaled these up, and that is fifty um, thousand six hundred dollars. And I've totaled this line, this, 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 this. I add all these up to make sure that I've got eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. And this is my little figure here. And now we got one more thing to do, and I'll show you that. Let me go ahead and unhide my lines that I've done. And there we are. Here we are. Here we have added. Um, you'll see here. This includes C19 plus C20. These are the two that are over 120 days higher than 120. This is only the one item that is between 90 and uh, 120. And on down the line, where I've taken, I've, I've just picked each one of these. and uh, put the uh, either the individual customer or the range of customers in each line. I've made sure that this actually adds up to the 50,600 that I have here and then I've made sure by adding up these numbers and then adding up these numbers that we have the same thing. So I feel like I've agreed everything pretty well and I know that we have nine hundred and twenty five thousand six hundred dollars in uh, accounts receivable now what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, compute or calculate the expected uncollectible accounts based on this aging schedule that we have so I'm going to get rid of my check figures that are no longer necessary give me a couple of lines and I'll come back in just a second Okay, uh, you notice here that um, I have still not checked the spelling of uncollectible, but in the book they're using uncollectible with an I. We'll just have to find out. I'll, I'll check it out here in a little bit. Um, you notice in the book they said that 1% of the, uh, in, in their experience, of the accounts that are not past due are uncollectible at any given time or turn out to be uncollectible. After their 1 to 30 days past due, 
four percent are un become uncollectible. Thirty-one to sixty, sixteen percent are uncollectible. Sixty-one to ninety, their experience shows that twenty-five percent are uncollectible. Ninety-one to one hundred twenty, that is six months out now. Three to six months out, forty percent are uncollectible. Over six months, eighty percent are uncollectible. As you can see, even though we have eighty-two thousand five hundred dollars worth of uh, accounts receivable that are over six months old and we have 424,000 that are uh, not past due we're gonna have a huge number over here uh, relative to this and let's just do the calculations we have 4,240 past due I mean that will be uncollectible let's extend that out and we come up with out of this 82,000, 66,000, 82,5, 66,000 will be uncollectible. We will sum all that up. And our magic number is $123,235. This is what we're going to make our adjustment for. Now what we've done is we have taken the schedule of accounts receivable we've completed it now I could have done it a different way I could have taken each one of these and listed them over here and put their account in the column and all that stuff I could have done it that way this way just kinda of worked out easier for me and I'm willing to do this if I really wanted a, to complete a, uh, a schedule of accounts receivable I would have put these in here the reason I didn't is because this line bothers me and I can't put these things in alphabetical order so I'm I'm just gonna say I gotta add them to the end anyway I'm gonna add them this way you can look and see what I've done and and everybody should be happy with that if they're not they'll they'll just have to not be happy with it um, so that gives us the balance in uncollectible accounts balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts of uh, 123,235 dollars now if you'll look at um, um, number four, the, uh, the the instruction number four, it says assume that the allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of seven thousand three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So let me just go up a little bit here, and we'll say, um, and I'm reaching around a microphone. A little bit slower than I am because of this program that I'm running. Uh, the uh, current balance is, let's see, that is a credit balance. Uh, the desired balance. Is, I want to make it equal to that and it's a credit balance it's a credit balance because this is a contra asset that will have, have a, a, a balance at opposite what an, a, an asset usually does so it has a credit balance as you can see here I have a credit balance going to a bigger credit balance so I'm just going to take the difference of those let's see here I can make this in one swoop excuse me one swoop if I want to and uh, hundred and fifteen thousand six hundred and eighty dollar credit entry is what I need to make my entry then should be fairly easy to do and I should be able to do bad debt expense let me look at my number one fifteen eight sixty y'all know that I can't talk and do this at the same time
and just go ahead and put that over there. So my adjusting entry, amongst all the other adjusting entries I'm going to make then, is going to be for $115,860, which creates a balance in my allowance for doubtful accounts of $123,235 based on this aging of receivables, receivables that I've done up here saying that I should end up with $123,235 that would be uncollectible when the, all the dust settles at the end of the year. And that's how we do the uh, analysis method to, um, to estimate doubtful accounts.